January 1692, and there is trouble in Salem Village. The minister's daughter and niece are exhibiting bizarre behavior. The village doctor says the girls are bewitched, but by whom? Reverend Paris orders prayer and fasting to counteract the witchcraft. But the girl's strange behavior continues, stopping and starting unpredictably for weeks. Over three centuries later, it is difficult for us to believe that the children's fits were induced by invisible witches. But if they weren't bewitched, what was going on? Children in 17th century Western society were not so much objects of affection within a family as they were uh, sources of labor and young sinners who needed to be disciplined into good behavior. We go astray as soon as we are born. Undutiful children are the children of Satan, and unto Satan they shall go into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. We can interpret it as children who are um, very deeply affected by concern for the ultimate fate of their souls. It seems to be a not usual but not unusual kind of pattern. But not all agree with this explanation. There are some who believe the girls' fits were triggered by poison. There's a theory that poisoning as it occurred in Salem was basically due to contaminated rye that led to um, hallucinogenic effects and all sorts of um, physical symptoms. Ergot is a type of fungus that grows on rye. People who eat bread containing this fungus have been known to experience nervous dysfunction. But the ergot poisoning theory has been refuted by scientists and others. Some of them should have died from it, and the fact that one minute they're perfectly well-behaved or at least perfectly normal in their physical appearance and uh, asymptomatic, and the next moment uh, they're having their fits or whatever uh, are inconsistent with the sim symptoms of convulsive ergotism. The afflicted in Salem throw their fits in unison at convenient times, such as when people come by to see them. This fact has led many to believe that the girls were simply faking it. But if the girls are play acting, it is a deadly game. They could be accused of witchcraft themselves and hanged. Pressured by Reverend Paris to name the witch whose specter is attacking them, Betty Paris and Abigail Williams point to an obvious scapegoat, Tichiba. Documents describe her and her husband as Indians. They are slaves from Barbados. She is dark-skinned, dark, like the Puritans' mortal enemies, the Wabanakis. And the news came from York about the Indian raid not all that far away, and people must have been terrified. Soon after hearing news of renewed Indian attacks, Mercy Lewis begins throwing fits, just like Betty and Abigail, and they are joined by others. Mercy Lewis works for the Putnam family, Anne Putnam Jr., age 12, Anne's mother, age 30, and Anne's cousin, Mary Walcott, 17. All are now acting bewitched. And it's spreading. Salem Village is a very small community, and all the afflicted would have known each other very well. There were little girls, there were teenagers and 20-somethings, and then there were some uh, married women who were also afflicted. Asked who is bewitching them, Several of the newly afflicted also accuse the minister's dark-skinned slave, Tichuba. Since the younger girl's accusations cannot be used as evidence in court, 
These new accusations by adult witnesses are critical. Now, legal action can be taken against Tichuba. A terrible machinery has been set in motion. It will take 20 people to their graves.